G'day, mates. Um, if this video just kind of appeared and you recommended and you don't know who I am, my name is Eris. I am a Danganronpa fan with autism. Um, Danganronpa is my special interest, and I've been playing Danganronpa for about seven years now. Um, I've met a lot of autistic fans in the Danganronpa fandom, and I would like today to kind of talk about my experiences with being autistic and how they do in fact relate to the Danganronpa fandom. So, why this month? Um, specifically this month is Autism Awareness Month. Um, well, Autism Awareness Month in itself is an important month. We're trying to, like, get it changed to, like, away from awareness. Because everyone's kind of aware that autism is a thing now. Like, people may say, eh, it's fake, it's not. And stuff like that. But we're not ever going to be cured, quote unquote. It's not something you need to cure. It's something that needs to be accommodated for. Um, organizations like Autism Speaks and stuff like that, they're hate organizations. Um, they do not, um, converse with autistic people to, like, figure out what we need. They are simply dedicated to finding a cure or trying to, you know, eugenics us out of the population. Um, a lot of people find Lighted Up Blue, especially Lighted Up Blue because that's directly related to Autism Speaks, and the implication that we're puzzle pieces to be very offensive. Not all autistics find the puzzle piece offensive, but a lot of us do. Um, for a symbol that we do all kind- well, not all of us, but like most of us kind of agree represents us. Um, we've got the Rainbow Infinity symbol, um, which is not offensive, it's designed by actual autistics, and yeah. Um, so, how does autism affect me internally? Well, I have rejection sensitive dysphoria, which means that, um, I can kind of get, I don't know, very hurt by people, like, rejecting what I've said, which isn't great when, like, you're, uh, like, making all of these videos that are, like, very controversial. <laughs> and, like, on, like, these big topics, which is why it can seem like I don't allow people to disagree with my opinions. Like, usually it's just because I've also pushed mine out into the harbor. Like, people assume that that means, oh, you just don't- you don't allow anyone to disagree with you. But, like, not true. I, I just like to additionally provide further perspective from my point of view. Like, you can disagree with my opinions all you want. The issue comes when you're being a dick. And, like, bringing in, um, bigotry into your views, which is what I would like to try and kind of push out. Um... We have sensitivity towards, like, certain clothing cuts. Um, like, I can't wear tight, like, tight-fitting clothing around, like, my hips, butt, and thighs. Um, they start, like, pressing in and it just feels extremely uncomfortable and, like, sensitive. Like, I'll, like, start scratching at my chest and stuff and things like that. Um, so yeah, certain clothing cuts are just off the table for us. Um, I don't have sensitivity towards, like, any, like, food tastes or textures, like, through my mouth. But, like, if I have to wash the dishes, they basically have to almost be spotless already. Or, like, only have dry food on them. Because if they got wet food on them and I touch it, it's just really, really bad. Really bad touch. Um, hyperfixations is obvious. Um, sometimes I'll hyperfixate on something else, like, that isn't Danganronpa, but it usually does always come back to Danganronpa. In, in some way or another. Um, I have a lot of struggles with... I have a lot of struggles with, like, eye contact. Um, I can't make eye, eye contact very well with anybody. So I may, you know, not really get someone's eye color. Like, if you tell me to remember someone's eye color, I'm probably not going to be able to do it. Um, and I also really, really struggle with socializing with, like, non-autistic people. Like, I can only hold, like, one or two conversations with them at a time, and then I have to, like, duck out. And I also have an enjoyment of, like, analysis, which has fueled my channel. Um, I really do enjoy making analysis videos, but, like, just recently it's kind of driven me into anxiety attacks, and I'm hoping that that goes away soon. Um, um, at the moment I do have- it's not a stim toy, but it's like a, um, it's like a lip balm, like, in the shape of a peach. That's, like, fun to play with. That's also something I do. It's a way of stimming. Um, not every autistic person stims. Some have like actual designed stim toys. I lost mine. So yeah. 
um, autistic people are not very welcomed into their communities. We're like often try to be shoved out or like hidden away. Um, like just from what I've faced, I've been called like just straight up slurs for being autistic. Like in primary school, um, there was this one girl, fuck, her name was like Rachel or Riley or something. Um, and like every day, if I didn't do something perfectly, she would call me like retarded. Um, like she'll call me a spurg, she'll call me a spaz, things like that. This was in primary school, like not long before or not long after I was diagnosed. I can't remember which. Um, people often also simultaneously treat me older and younger than I actually am. I'm going to talk about that in detail later. Um, in high school, in grade 11, um, I was subjected, like I, the class was supposed to watch a film called The Black Balloon, which is, it's supposed to be a film about autism, but the main character is holistic, which is a non-autistic. And it goes around how like difficult it is to deal with his autistic brother, and it depicts the autistic character doing all of these horrible things that like autistic people never actually do. Um, it's a really fucking disgusting movie, and like I'm horrified that they made people actually study it for um, for school and stuff. Um, it was actually the final straw that made me just drop out of grade 11 and drop out of school entirely and instead do TAFE and use that as my gateway to university instead. Um, another thing is that autistic people were often made ashamed. Like when we did get representation that was, you know, they explicitly state that, yeah, like, yes, this character is autistic if the media isn't, like, you know, designed for children. Um, for example, like, Overwatch. Um, I don't play it anymore, but um, Symmetra was unveiled as being intended to be autistic a few years back. Um, at the time, like when it, I just first saw the comic, I felt very affirmed, I felt very seen, and I knew that this would also be good for um, autistic people of colour because Symmetra is an Indian woman who is um, also very clearly said, said to be autistic, which like autism, where like autistic characters are difficult enough to find, especially autistic characters of color. But um, I felt ashamed of it after everyone started making like jokes about her autism and like going, "Wow, Symmetra's autistic. It's just like all of her mains," and you know, gross shit like that. It instead of me being like proud of for being autistic, I kind of shoved it back down and like tried to make it not widely available, and you know, like. It was there if you could tell, and like I would go, yeah, I'm autistic, but like it it's just something that um like it made me hide the fact rather than openly provide it, like my gender and sexuality. Um because I just didn't need more, and I'd already picked like what I wanted to disclose. Um I've also faced a lot of demonization from people who don't understand my tics, or like kind of you know, people who only see what they want to see and like try to stretch that out to accommodate for their own fame and you know in the end they're just kind of being a bully i don't always push forth what i mean like what i say will make sense to me but it may not make sense to somebody else and i have struggled with um trying to communicate my ideas in a way that like we both understand um as i said rejection sensitive dysphoria and um like things like that um, it makes it very difficult for me to kind of communicate exactly what I mean and like people have decided to take that and run with it and think that their interpretation of events is like the truth when they've barely met me at all. They've had like one conversation and they couldn't even hold back from holding me slurs in it but they're like, you know, I know everything there is to know about this person so I'm going to make a video and it's like, man... Like, this has happened multiple times. Not, like, even before I became a large YouTuber, I would say something and people would, like, drag it out of context or, like, imply I said something that I didn't at all mean. And, like, people will often do that to autistic people because we're an easy target for them. It's not even, like, even, even though that is a thing, like, there are actually some people who are, like, evil people who just happen to be autistic, but people, like, try to tie in the autism into why they're a terrible person. Um, there was an autistic police officer in the UK, which, you know, racist already. Um, he was a neo-Nazi, 
Um, but three experts, quote unquote, um, labeled his autism as relevant to his interest in fascism, which, like, an interest in the history of World War II is not in itself, like, racist or offensive, but, like, when he's identifying as a neo-Nazi and, like, actively being a racist, that's not relevant to autism at all. Like, that's not the autism talk- that's not the autism talking, that's him being a racist. Um... I've also faced a lot of infantilization as a autistic person, to the point where, like, even now it can be difficult to actually understand that I am in fact an adult. Like, a young adult, but an adult nonetheless. Um, autism and, like, like, autism treatment is often geared towards children. There's very little autism- autistic treatment available for adults, where often like, kind of, it often, people often kind of assume that, like, autism will go away when we're older. It doesn't, we're, we're autistic. It's like, it's like implying, oh, this person's missing legs will grow back when they're older. It, it doesn't happen. But, like, people will simultaneously treat me like a child while expecting me to act like an adult. And, like, when I say act like an adult, I don't kind of mean, like, a 22-year-old adult in, you know, this COVID... Uh, recession, richer getting richer, poorer getting poorer environment. But they expect me to act like a fucking adult, like who was 40 in the middle of the 80s, with like two mortgages and, you know, a wife and three children. Which, neither of these are realistic expectations for me whatsoever, I'm sorry. Alright, I think I've talked enough about like the doom and gloom of autism, but. I feel like if I wasn't autistic, I would not be able to, um, kind of do the videos that I am doing. Um, it's my special interest that kind of keeps me focused on, um, this sort of stuff, even if I kind of fall behind a few times and get distracted by, like, Minecraft or something. Um, Dr. Romper itself is a series with a lot of autistic coding in it. Um, from the- from the fucking premise itself. Like, every student goes to Hope's Peak Academy based on a special interest that they're extremely good at. A lot of these people have practiced at it, and a lot of people, like, kind of get really depressed when they try something new and they can't do it very well, which is, you know, very much an autistic trait. Um, a lot of these characters have, like, special interests. Like, Kaide, for example, really, really obsessed with the piano. It's clearly her hyperfixation. Um, she can communicate pretty well with other people, which, you know, some autistic people can do that. But, like, at the same time, she also talks about how, like, everything kind of has to relate back to her hyperfixation, which is really, really strong, like, autistic coding. Like, a lot of us may experience that. Um, for example, there's also, like, Himiko, who, like, is strong in the belief that she is, in fact, a real mage. Um, like, there's a lot, a lot of people who have, like, kind of made the connection between her and, like, some autistic traits. Uh, there's just, like, a lot of characters who have very autistic relationships with their talents. And, like, with this premise and, like, writing, like, Dog and Rumpa, it's... This is not true at all. Like, like, it's not confirmed at all. Take it with a grain of salt. But I think that Kadaka himself may be autistic. Like, just given, like, the writing of Dog and Rumpa, like, all of the things, and... Like, it itself is a very- it's like- like, Pokemon was also written as, like, an autistic game for autistic people, which, you know, holistic people can enjoy it as well, and so can people with Danganronpa, but I feel like Danganronpa is- for people who find Pokemon too light-hearted and are looking for something that caters to them, because a lot of us do indeed bear the scars of trauma, and for us, Danganronpa may be something- maybe a better escape for us. Like, I can- I never really got into Pokemon, it was just confusing me. But Danganronpa was pretty easy. I, I found it easy anyway. And I've met a lot of um, fans of Danganronpa who are also autistic. Um, my friend from- my friend in real life, uh, they're autistic. Um, we met a couple months ago and yeah. Um, my partners are both autistic and we met through Danganronpa. Um, a lot of my friends are autistic, and even some fellow Dangantubers are autistic, though I won't disclose which ones, just because they've asked me to remain confidential on that. But, 
it's very clear that um, there's just something about Dying Rumpa that draws a lot of autistic people to the property, you know? So I don't really think it's a surprise that like so many autistic people are into Danganronpa. It's just something that's fun for us. Um, I think I've talked enough for today, however. Um, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I would recommend subscribing and, if you can, donating to my Patreon. Both of these are things that help the channel out immensely, like with increasing the channel's reach and with um, helping me afford more help with videos. I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time.